Hello, my name is Robert Dean Steele, and this is your Saturday morning uh, prayer time. And I am looking forward to spending some time with you today. So, Father, we thank you today for this wonderful opportunity to pray. And, Lord, there is so much to pray about today. And we want to be able to do it, Lord, both effectively and powerfully today. And we ask this now in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I'm always thinking about household salvation and also as well, preparation for, of course, Sunday. So, Father, today, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start off, Lord, with our own preparation. You know, it tells us, Lord, in uh, Matthew 6, that we are to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto us. Lord, that's what we're praying for today, that all the things that we're looking for, Lord, need to be added to us. But Lord, it must start off first and foremost with your being the source. We thank you that, Lord, no matter what situation we find ourselves in, no matter what direction we are going, we can put our trust, we can put everything in your hand, and that's exactly what we are doing right now. We're so grateful, Lord, today that you can do exceedingly, abundantly, beyond what we're able to ask or even imagine. And so, Lord, today, we thank you for that. Now, Lord, what we're going to do today is we're going to establish, Lord, the very fact that, Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, that, Lord, as we make a decision, to make you the number one priority. We're going to ask you, Lord, to be with every part of our situation today. And we are believing for breakthrough today, not just for ourselves, but Lord, for our marriages, for our families, for every single situation. So Lord, we bring this before you and we thank you that, Lord, you are the one who hears and answers prayer. Now, the first thing we want to do, Lord, is love you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love our neighbor as ourselves. Lord, with this decision to make you the number one priority in our lives, Lord, we're asking that your love would heal us of every situation that we have found ourselves in this week. Lord, whether we have fully followed you or not. Lord, right now in this moment, we are asking you, Lord, to turn around every situation that we have found this week. Lord, we're asking that every situation that we find ourselves today, you are going to be the one who brings us through to victory. And we need you, Lord, to bring us through to victory. There is a victory in Jesus Christ. There is a breakthrough that is coming in Jesus Christ. And we are declaring today that that breakthrough is going to happen. We're declaring today that, Lord, right now, as you are healing us, Lord, in turn, we can be uh, messengers and also as well bearers and also ambassadors of that same love in our world today. Thank you for that, Lord. And Lord, we also make a decision today to love you and to present our bodies to you, Lord, as a living sacrifice right now, Lord. Our time, our talents, and our resources, our past, our present, and our future belong fully and solely to you. Lord, we want to be sanctified individuals, people set apart for holy purposes. Lord, like Aaron of old, we want to be able, Lord, to be consecrated. As the day that uh, Moses poured the uh, oil over Aaron's head and over the head of his children, Lord, we ask that right now that you consecrate us. You would set us aside, Lord, for holy and eternal purposes. And we break every fetter, we break every chain, we break every bondage that, Lord, would be against us and against our families. Lord, today, in the name of Jesus, we want our service to be holy and acceptable to you. Father, we don't want one area of our lives to be uh, suspect 
And Lord, we also want to give no foothold to the devil. So Father, right now, in Jesus' name, our decision is to confess our sins. And we do that today, Lord. Every single sin. Every thought, every word, every deed, every attitude, every morning. We give it all over to you. And Lord, we are so sorry for what we have done this week with every fiber of our being. And Lord, we're asking you today to turn things around for us. Lord, we know that there are consequences and we know that there are certain things that Lord can happen. And we're asking for grace. We're asking for mercy. We're asking for your love, Lord, to pour into our situation and reverse, Lord, all the effects of all the things that have happened, Lord, because of our disobedience. Lord, we can be disobedient. You have been speaking to us about the deepness of prayer. You've talked to us, Lord, over and over about a responsibility, Lord, of fighting not just for ourselves, but for our families, for our situation. And Lord, that's exactly what we're going to do today. We're going to take back every single portion, every single inch of ground that we have lost to the enemy. And we're going to ask you, Lord, today to enable us, Lord, to fight effectively. And Lord, that's why we've confessed our sins. That's why we have presented our bodies to you as a living sacrifice. That's why we're saying today, Lord, with your help, we're not going to do it again. And we're going to receive your love. Now, Lord, what we're going to do right now is we're not going to conform to the images or standards of the world. Lord, we're not going to allow pain, pleasure, pride, and possessions possess us. Father, today, in the name of Jesus, we have one priority, one goal, one aim, and that is to do everything we can, Lord, to gain back, Lord, and also, Lord, take back, and then go into the camp of the enemy and take back everything that is stolen from us. Father, we're declaring that right now in Jesus' name. And Lord, also as well, we choose to be transformed by the renewing of our mind by allowing the Word of God to saturate every aspect of our lives. That, Father, today there will not be one area of the lives, and especially in our family situation. Lord, you know that we need to see a breakthrough. You know that we need to see the power of God moving in every single situation. And, Lord, we're going to be praying today for a breakthrough. We're going to be praying Lord, for our families. We're going to be praying, Lord, for our loved ones today. That is the focus of where we're going to go today, Lord. And so, Lord, right now, we know that, Lord, we can have the transforming of the will of God and that we can know the perfect and acceptable will of God. We're going to do that right now in the name of Jesus. So, Father, first of all, we pray for our spouses. We stand in the gap today for our spouses. Lord, you know that so many things can affect our spouses. Lord, you know that some have spent many, many sleepless nights, Lord, praying over their children. You know that our spouses, Lord, are, are deeply affected by what goes on in their family situation. And Lord, we're praying today for spouses that have lost sleep because of something that their children have done. Lord, we're praying today that you would heal those breaches in a family. We know that, Lord, all kinds of things can come up in a family situation. You know that, Lord, in some situations, families are warring. And Lord, we're praying for those warring families right now. We're praying for sisters who have hurt sisters. We're praying for brothers who have hurt brothers. We're praying, Lord, for parents who have hurt their children. Father, in whatever situation that find themselves in conflict. Lord, I think about the fact that, for example, in the Bible, you have Jacob and Esau. Esau, of course, was the older brother. And he didn't really um, understand or comprehend the importance of the blessing or the importance of the birthright until they were gone. 
And then, Lord, once he realized the very fact of what he had lost, instead of, of uh, looking to his own heart, he blamed someone else. And that in, that, in respect to that, him and his brother Jacob became estranged. And this estrangement lasted for 20 years. Lord, we can't allow families to uh, be estranged. We are praying today for those families. Lord, we're going to do a Job right now. Job, in Job chapter 1, spent daytime. Uh, I mean, every morning, the Bible says that he would lift up his children before the Lord. And he would offer a sacrifice. And he would say, Lord, if they have done something, would you not hold it to their account, but to my account? And Job prayed daily for his children. He knew, and as we all know, that conflict can come up within a family over just about anything. But Lord, Job also knew the power of prayer. And Lord, that's why we're praying today. That's why we're praying for our children. That's why we're standing in the gap for our children. The Bible does tell us in Acts 16, 31, that not only shall we be saved, but our household as well. Father, we're praying for each one of our children. And we know that, Lord, once our children grow up, then, Lord, what we have to do is we go from, from parent to uh, basically, Lord, individuals who pray and bring their children before you. Lord, we can't make their decisions anymore. We can pray for them. We can counsel them. We can give them advice. But Lord, we can't live their lives. And so, Lord, we, we're thankful for Proverbs 22, 6 that says, train a child in the way they should go. And when they're old, they will not depart from it. But we are praying today. We're making some declarations today because the simple fact is that, Lord, when a family is in conflict, when a family is in trouble, then, Lord, the only thing that we have to stand upon is the scriptures and also pray for divine intervention in the lives of every single individual. So, Lord, today we pray for our male children and we pray for our female children. We stand in the gap for them today and ask that, Lord, whatever they are, whatever they're doing, Lord, we have a responsibility to pray for them. We are standing in the gap for them today. Lord, no matter where they find themselves, no matter what situation they find themselves, Lord, we're lifting them before you. First of all, Lord, we're going to pray for wayward children the prodigals in our family. Lord, we know that there are many times that our children are doing things that we do not approve of. And whatever that may be today, Lord, we're lifting them before you today. Lord, we all know that there are consequences to what we do. And we know that there are Certain things that can happen, Lord, especially if we find ourselves outside the will of God. And so we lift our children before you in that very fact. Lord, we pray for the prodigals today, that, Lord, they would come to themselves. Now, Lord, we know our responsibility. We know from the story of the book of Luke, where Luke talked about the dad, the dad who allowed his son to leave even though he knew what his son was going to do. And his responsibility, he prayed for his children, but he also looked for his child to return. He had the promise of God. The promise of God was that, Lord, we would train a child in the way they should go. And when they're old, they will not depart from it. He knew that you were going to be divinely intervening and watching. And when that son had spent everything he had and learned the consequences of what he had done, he chose to come home. And the father, instead of taking on the attitude of, I told you so, instead saw him coming, ran to him, 
threw his arms around him, restored him, Lord, even though he was not worthy of restoration. Lord, that is a wonderful picture of you. Lord, we will walk away from you. We will self-destruct. It's very easy to do. It's very easy, Lord, to listen to the lies of the enemy, to listen to the lies of the world, or even, Lord, allow our own selfishness, Lord, to take a hold of us. And the reality of the situation is that, Lord, we can do exactly what the, the, the prodigal do. Lord, that is the incredible thing. We need to remember one thing, Lord. When we walk by someone who is, for example, drinking, or someone who is doing a lifestyle that we ourselves do not approve of, we need to remember one important fact. Except for the grace of God, there goes I. It was great. the great Indian uh, chieftain whose name was Ketchikan. Ketchikan was asked one time, how is it that you can seem to love your enemy? He says, very simple. He says, I walk or I try to walk in that person's moccasins for at least one day. Lord, when we put ourselves in their shoes, we can understand, Lord, why they did what they did, or we can try to understand. We can also, though, can learn to pray effectively for them. And that's why we're praying today for our children. That's why we're standing in the gap, especially for wayward children. Father, we ask that, Lord, right now, whatever state our children are, wherever they are, no matter what they're doing, Father, we're going to make a declaration today. And that declaration is Acts 16.31. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We're going to make that declaration of Proverbs 22.6, train a child in the way they should go. And then we're going to make a, a faith declaration, that declaration that Joshua made those days when he met with the nation of Israel, when he said to them, yes, you have seen the goodness of God. You have seen how God has protected you. You have seen how God has kept you. And this is the important fact. You were taken out of the nation of Egypt. You were slaves, but God set you free. You had the experience of being cradled in the wilderness for 40 days or for 40 years and became a nation. Then you saw how that God gave you the victory in the land of Canaan. But now, now uh, things are going well. You need to remember that there are other forces and other factors that are going to try to draw you away from the Lord. He says, but I want you to know something. As for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. Father, we're making that as our faith declaration today. Lord, we're standing in the gap for our family today. Lord, we're praying for the family members that, Lord, are struggling financially. We are breaking the curses off of our family members that, Lord, are struggling in that area. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are declaring today that, Lord, this is the day that, Father, you are going to supply every need. And we are breaking, Lord, right now, every blockage, every hindrance, and, Lord, also as well. If there is a uh, poverty uh, situation, Lord, that is in our background. We're breaking it right now. If there is alcohol in our background, we are breaking that right now in the name of Jesus. If there is any generational curse that comes through us, Father, we know that before we came to know Jesus Christ, things were not good. And Lord, what we did is we made a decision that it wasn't going to affect our family. But Lord, we know that there are times where family members, Lord, can be struggling. 
And Lord, we're praying for them today. We're praying that, Lord, this is the day of breakthrough for them. That, Lord, you are going to supply their need. And any generational curse is broken right now in Jesus' name. We are declaring it null and void according to God's word. We're believing, Lord, today that you are Baal Perizim for them, the God of the breakthrough. Father, we are praying today that the blessing of God is going to begin to flow. Lord, we know that when we look at the ancient times, when we look, for example, at um, Abraham, he was blessed, Lord, with abundance. Lord, even when he was wrong, even though, Lord, he was in the wrong when it came to Egypt, the Egyptian leadership gave him, blessed him, and sent him away blessed. We know that, Lord, when uh, Isaac was in a time of famine, you blessed him 100-fold. Father, we're believing today that a generational uh, blessing is going to fall upon our children today. We're believing that, Lord, today that you are going to give us a breakthrough in every area, Lord. We're declaring by faith right now that the blessing of God is going to come through us and it's going to fall upon our children right now in Jesus' name. And they too are going to see a breakthrough that the poverty spirit which has been on many families, is going to be broken right now, including my own, Lord. I am declaring today that my children are going to be blessed. My sons and my daughters, Lord, are going to see a breakthrough. Lord, you said, test me and see if I don't open the windows of heaven. That's what we're praying for, Lord, today. We're praying for you, Lord, to open the windows of heaven and bring that blessing, Lord, upon the people of God. Bring it now, Lord. Bring it now. We declare that right now in Jesus' name, that Lord, today, our children are going to be abundantly supplied. That Father, whatever would come against their finances, whatever would come against them would be broken right now in Jesus' name. Lord, as well today, we are praying for family members where their marriages are in trouble or in conflict. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for our family members. Lord, there are a multitude of reasons why families fall apart why husbands and wives find themselves in conflict. But there is one inescapable factor, and that is that people fall out of love. But Lord, they need to recognize that love is not a fancy. It is not a feeling. It is not an emotion. It is also, Lord, not a set of, of chemicals in the brain. It is a decision. We ask that, Lord, right now, the very reasons why people get together, that they would have a moment and remember that. Lord, I know that in my own life, whenever I have a moment that, Lord, I struggle, I know that I go back and I look at my wedding picture and I realize how really wonderful my wife really is. When she struggles, Lord, with sleep or, or she needs that loving hand, Lord, I put it upon her because, Lord, I recognize what a beautiful and godly woman she really is. And Father, let us remember today about that factor. Now, Lord, we do pray for families that are struggling in that area. Lord, we're praying for healing right now. We're lifting marriages before you right now. And we're asking that, Lord, those very factors that, Lord, are drawing them apart. And we know that part of that attack is because of our own selfishness, our own desires. But, Lord, also as well, there is external forces that are uh, also attacking. Lord, when a, a marriage is in trouble, the enemy is going to go in there. He's going to stir up emotions. He's going to stir up feelings of resentment. Lord, he's going to take past hurts. He's going to take past pain and bring it to the attention. 
and he's going to feed on those emotions. He's going to feed on the very things that we give him. But today, in the name of Jesus, we are commanding the demonic forces out of these marriages. We are declaring today that, Lord, there's going to be healing in marriages. Lord, as patriarchs and matriarchs of our family, we have great influence, Lord, but especially in the area of prayer. Because the Bible says where two or three as agree as touching anything, it shall be done. Today, Lord, we are agreeing today that the enemy will not be able to continue to rob, kill, and destroy our marriages, especially the marriages of our children, of our daughters and son-in-laws right now in Jesus' name. We're believing that, Lord, you're going to turn those situations around, that you're going to heal them, that they're going to find themselves falling back in love, that they're going to make a decision that, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus, they're going to stay in those marriages, that they're going to seek the counsel. They're going to seek the help that they need, Lord, to be able to put their marriages back together. Because, Lord, especially if there are children involved, and many times there are children involved. And as parents, we really don't know the effect of what we do, but we affect our children. When we don't love our children, when we don't respect our children, when we bully our children, or whatever we do to our children. Lord, there are fathers, for example, that are exasperating their children right now. It says in Galatia, or I should say Ephesians 6, fathers do not exasperate your children, but we do that, Lord. And when we do that, Lord, we're destroying their self-esteem. Dads, for example, don't know that 80% of a child's self-esteem come from their father figure. And so if you have an overbearing father, if you have a father who does not love his children unconditionally and also as well puts his own insecurity on his children, he is going to raise insecure, he is going to raise exasperated children. Or if we have fathers who are uh, abdication, who have who are not there, who have abdicated their responsibilities, then we have a whole generation of young men and young women who don't know what it's like to have a father. And then later, when they give their lives to Jesus Christ, they struggle with that. And we know that that can become a real problem. We're praying today for those families. We're praying today that, Lord, we will not take our own um, insecurities and pass it on to our children. Lord, that can in itself can be a generational curse. We break that right now in Jesus' name, and we pray for harmony. We pray for unity. Lord, it was David who said, how good and pleasant it is to, for, for brethren to dwell together in unity. Now, Lord, David understood that unity begins with the Lord, by allowing the Lord to anoint us, to allow the Lord to have his victory in our lives. David saw this wonderful picture, and he was remembering the day that Moses anointed Aaron and put oil on his head and sanctified him and his sons for the work of the ministry. And how that the wonderful oil poured over his head, into his beard, down into the folds of his clothes. And David saw that as the beginning of unity. It was Paul who said, make every effort to keep the unity of the faith. Lord, we know that there are factors and forces that would love to destroy the unity of a family, to destroy the, the, uh, the cohesion of a family. But today, in the name of Jesus, we are breaking those forces. We are telling those forces, you cannot touch our children. You cannot touch our grandchildren. You cannot touch um, uh, 
our marriages. You cannot touch our moms and our dads. You can't touch our grandmas and our grandpas. You can't touch our spouses, uh, whatever form they may come, daughter-in-law, son-in-laws. Today, you can't touch our cousins. You cannot touch our family at all in the name of Jesus. We are covering our families with prayer right now in Jesus' name. We are declaring that, Lord, those factors, those uh, attackers of our families are broken right now in Jesus' name. You cannot walk into our families. You cannot continue to rob, kill, and destroy our families. You will not be able to do that. Lord, also as well, we pray for a hunger and a thirst and a desperation for you in our families. Lord, in an earlier part of this prayer, we prayed that wonderful declaration of faith of Joshua 24, 15, where Joshua made a statement. That statement was to his generation and also to the generation that is going to follow. As for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. Lord, sometimes it is a declaration of faith. We need to stand in the gap for our children and our grandchildren. Lord, I'm standing today as a father. I'm standing today as a grandfather. And I am standing today, Lord, as a warrior grandfather in the spiritual realm. And I am saying to those spiritual forces, those worldly forces, and those human elements, Lord, those human agents, you take your hands off my children. You cannot have them. You cannot have my grandchildren. And Lord, that's what we need to say in the spiritual realm as fathers and as mothers. Lord, we are to say that to our brothers and our sisters. You cannot do these things. You are now under the protection and under the uh, uh, victory of the Lord. We are calling those things which are not as if they are. We are speaking unity into our families. We are speaking love into our families. We are speaking, Lord, reconciliation and forgiveness back into our families. Lord, that may not be truthful right now, but we are speaking those things which are not as if they are. We are declaring by faith that wonderful promise. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Father, it may be today a declaration of faith. We may not see that right now, but Lord, we are making and we are speaking to the valleys of the dry bones in our families. And Lord, we are not taking the uh, uh, approach that Ezekiel first took when he said, well, only you, Lord, if these things can live. No, we are prophesying today that our families are going to fall back into line that the declarations that we have made over our families are going to happen in the name of Jesus. And one of those declarations that we're going to make, Lord, is that our children are going to return to the house of God. That, Lord, our children and our grandchildren are going to serve the Lord. Those wayward children, Lord, we are speaking to them today of Proverbs 22, 6. They are going to come back. And Lord, they are going to be like the prodigal who's going to come to themselves and are going to return home. And Father, we're going to do exactly what the Father did. We're going to receive them and we're going to restore them. The ministry of reconciliation. That's what the church is all about. We are in the ministry of reconciliation. We are reconciling people back to God. We are telling them about Jesus Christ. We are telling them today that they can be healed. They can be whole. The, the emotional baggage that, Lord, they are carrying can be thrown behind their back. They can start fresh. They can start new. Lord, that's what we're praying for today for our families, that there will be an aha moment 
where they will come to themselves and say, what I'm doing is wrong. I'm hurting myself. I'm hurting my mothers and fathers by what I do. I'm hurting my family. I'm hurting you, God. And Lord, they will come to themselves today. They will have that aha moment where they will realize that they're not just hurting themselves, but they're hurting others by what they do. Father, we're praying today as moms and dads that these things will begin to be restored. Father, we're praying today that the conflict that is going on inside our children, whatever that conflict is, the stress, the anxiety, the fears, the cares, the worries, Father, in the mental realm, the spiritual realm, the physical realm, the emotional realm, the financial realm. Lord, we're praying that those things would be broken. We pray today that, Lord, our children would see the goodness of God, that they would see the reality of God, that they would have the fullness of God in their situation today. Lord, we're fighting for our families. We're standing in the gap for our families. Lord, we know that the family unit is the strength of our society. And the enemy is doing everything he can. His MO for families is to rob, kill, and destroy. Lord, we're not about to let that happen. Today, in the name of Jesus, we're praying that our families will see the importance of the house of God. And that, Father, this would be the weekend that children who are not attending the house of God would all of a sudden see the reality of it. Lord, I know where I pastor in St. Albert, we are praying daily for families. Lord, you know that when I walk past a home, I say things such as this, Lord, I don't know what's going on in that home. But I'm asking you, Lord, to solve their situation. I'm asking you, Lord, to go into that home and to speak to those members in that home. They may be wealthy. They may not be. But, Lord, wherever they are, meet them and bring them, Lord, to that place where they will bow their knee to you. And they will recognize that their need of a Savior. Lord, when people don't know Jesus Christ, they're like the people of Nineveh. They don't know their right hand from their left. They're like the people that crucified Jesus. And Jesus, in his love and grace, said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Lord, they're living under the realm of the enemy. They're doing the, they're doing the agenda of the enemy, or they're doing the agenda of themselves. Father, there's a wonderful scripture found in the book of Proverbs. It simply says this, we can make all the plans, but it is you, Lord, that directs their path. Father, there is another important factor in this particular uh, situation, and that is the nearness of Jesus Christ. Lord, we know, as we said yesterday in our message, Lord, you could come back at any time. And Father, so many people will be caught unaware. Billions of people will be caught unaware. And even, Lord, today, many Christians, including members of our families, they may have heard the message of Jesus Christ. They may even be cognizantly aware of the nearness of Jesus Christ coming back. Lord, we are standing in the gap for them today. We are pleading for their situation today. We're asking that, Lord, this would be the moment. This would be the moment of realization. I talked earlier about an aha moment where all of a sudden we come to ourselves and we realize where we are. Lord, that's what the prodigal did. He was sitting there in a pigsty, and he was looking at the pig slop and said, what am I doing? My father's servants 
have it better than I do. He came to himself. That's what we know, Lord. So many in this world, Lord, are, are looking at pig slop, and they may be eating it out of a Tupperware bowl or a golden chalice. It doesn't matter. Pig slop is pig slop. Whether we're eating it out of a Tupperware bowl or whether we're eating it out of a golden chalice. Father, I remember the story of the Matrix where people, if all of a sudden the individual said, you have a decision to make, the blue pill or the red pill. If you take one pill, you stay in your delusion. But if you take another pill, your eyes will be wide open. Lord, there are consequences to having our eyes open. Lord, I pray today with every fiber of my being that, Lord, our children and our grandchildren would have that moment. They would realize where they are is not where God wants them to be. And they would stop what they're doing. And they would say, Father, I'm coming home. That's what we're praying for today, that our children would come home, that our children would find our Father in heaven, and they would make a decision that wherever they are and whatever state they are, that, Lord, this would be the moment that they'd come home. That's what we're praying for today, Lord. We're praying that families would come home. They would come home to a mom and dad who loved them and care for them. That, Lord, they would come home to family members who will stand with them. We know the strength of family and how important it is for a family unit to be together. We're breaking the forces of hell off of our families, and we're declaring the forces of hell. You cannot have our families. You cannot have them. You will not be able to rob, kill, and we are standing in the gap as intercessors right now in this moment, and we are declaring, you are not going to have our families. But Lord, they will do an Apostle Paul when he said in Philippians, forgetting those things which are behind, I look forward to those things which are ahead. Lord, the only true anchor in life is you. The only true help is you. We're calling our children home. We're calling those people, Lord, who are broken and hurt and dealing with so many things today. Paul, uh, Peter said, cast all your cares on me, for I care for you. Lord, that's what we're doing today. We're praying for our children, and we're asking you, that they would cast all their cares on you, that they would turn everything over to you. Lord, we're doing that. We're turning everything over to you right now in the name of Jesus. And we are pleading for our families. We are standing in the gap for our families. We are asking you, Lord, to intervene in our families, our marriages, our children's lives, our grandchildren's lives, our great-grandchildren's lives, whatever factor, Lord, that they are associated with us, whether it is through an adoption process, whether it is through a biological process, whether it is through a marriage process, Father, in the name of Jesus, we are praying for healing of families. This is so important today, Lord. I cannot stress it enough. The family that prays together stays together. And as moms and dads, as brothers and sisters, whatever factor we find ourselves in the family unit, we are believing today that, Lord, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Train a child in the way they should go, and when they're old, they will not depart from it. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That is what we're believing for today, Lord. That is why we're standing in the gap today. We're not going to let our families go. We're going to believe for healing. We're going to believe for restoration. We're going to believe for reformation, reconciliation, forgiveness. It's all going to flow. 
Those things are going to flow today, and we declare that to happen, Lord. We're not going to let go of the horns of the altar. We're going to stand in the gap today for our families, and we're going to believe for good things today, Lord, in our families. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, my name is Robert Dean Steele. We prayed today for families, and we're going to continue to pray for families because we know that they need help. But if you have, uh, if you like what you've been hearing, I would encourage you to press the like button and also subscribe to my YouTube channel. My name is Robert Dean Steele. You have yourself a great and godly day. And remember, you and I have the power to bring back our families from the brink. In Jesus' name, amen.